receive to start here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Mostly pro Razorback crowd here in Memphis, and we're underway. Dominique Reed bottled up shy of his own 20-yard line, and we get our first look at this Razorback offense. They're led by Brandon Allen, a young man who's endured a lot of criticism from this Arkansas fan base, but in his senior season, he was not just one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC but one of the best quarterbacks in the entire FBS. Absolutely. He led the SEC in passer rating with 165.2. This kid possesses a live arm with pop and power, which allows him to make all the throws over the field. Special talent. Arkansas in its chrome helmets coming out for this special occasion. They'll start out in a three-receiver set. Into the flat to the tight end, and the Mackey Award winner, Hunter Henry, for a gain of three. That Mackey Award goes to the best tight end in the nation, and you won't find one better than 84 and white. He plays like a man amongst boys. And simply put, he reminds me when I watch him on film of Cowboys tight end Jason Witten. They're both very, they've got soft hands, can catch the football, but they also are good and decent blockers. This young man will play a lot of football in years to come. Quick screen pass, and there's Drew Morgan, who led the SEC in receiving touchdowns. Come on, our impact players are brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Who do we have today? Well, you heard me talk about the tight end, Hunter Henry. Alex Collins, I believe the most underrated running back in the SEC. And on the opposite side for Kansas State, outside linebacker Elijah Lee will have to be active today. And speaking of active, the most active defensive lineman for Kansas State, Travis Prince. He leads his team in tackles for losses and for sacks. Third and four, third downs, normally Hunter Henry territory. Allen to throw, intercepted. Elijah Lee, one of your impact players with his third pick in the season and making an impact right away. Well, this young man is 6'3", 218 pounds from Blue Springs, Missouri. And you watch him here just undercut this throw. I say that at 218 pounds, he's a little undersized to be able to play in the middle. But what an athletic play to be able to get his hands on that football, keep his feet in bounds, and really get the momentum swinging for Kansas State. Now they've got short field bringing out their offense. Fantastic first series for this Kansas State Wildcats defense. Only the fifth interception all season by this Kansas State defense. Cody Cook, normally a wide receiver. The starting quarterback for K-State. This Wildcat team has been beset by injuries at the quarterback position. And Cook getting the start. He played well in relief of Joe Hubner in the regular season finale against West Virginia. And Cook to the outside before finally being driven out of bounds by Josh Liddell. Cody Cook really came in and gave this team a charge in the West Virginia game. And I think that is why Bill Snyder went with him. But you also see why he's going to be a great option today. The quarterback run game. You see him come out first play of the game. He picks up nine yards. And if you're Arkansas, that's the play you've got to stop to be able to really shut down this Kansas State offense. On second and one, the give to Charles Jones. And he is ambushed back at the 25. Impact players brought to you by U.S. Navy. Who are we watching when K-State has the ball? Well, Cody Cook also lines up as wide receiver, so look, keep an eye on 19 when he's there. Cody Whitehair, one of the best offensive linemen in the Big 12. Strong, sturdy man who's got great feet. And on the opposite side, Brooks Ellis, the linebacker, will be responsible for stuffing the run. And Dietrich Wise Jr. is a backup defensive end, but he leads this team in sacks and tackles for losses, and he's an elite pass rusher. You have Cody Cook in there, and that's because he'll be both a QB and a wide receiver today. 
Both quarterbacks will play according to Bill Snyder. Cook to the air, his pass over the middle and that is caught. Deontay Burton takes it to the 10 yard line. First and goal, Kansas State. Burton played well in that West Virginia game at the end of the regular season. They're hoping he can build on that. Well, this is just a slant route, you know, and you've got to be tough to come across the middle of the field. That time, Cody Cook stares him down. But for a young man who's, who's a wide receiver naturally, to be able to throw the football in the windows like that, it's just amazing to me that he's competing at this level at both the wide receiver and quarterback position. This is Winston Dibble and the fullback powers in. Kansas State strikes first. Since 2011, Kansas State is 28-2 when scoring first. Dimmel, his sixth rushing touchdown, and here's McCrane for the point after. What a great start for this Kansas State Wildcats team. You start off with an Elijah Lee pick, athletic play to undercut the route. They come back, Dimmel punches it in with power football, physical. Wildcats up by seven. Memphis, Tennessee, and when the Wildcats strike first, They've done well, especially since 2011 under Bill Snyder. And that was important for a team that had struggled offensively and defensively because of injuries, getting off to a good start and building some early confidence. There's no question about it. And it also is very different for Arkansas because they've scored first in each of the last six games. So now the tide turning for the Wildcats. Dominic Reed. Wrapped up as he gets across the 25-yard line. And we look at today's keys to the game, brought to you by Franklin American. For Arkansas, it's establish your playmakers early. You talked, We talked about the plethora of guys that they have there. Defend the quarterback run game, and for Kansas State, control time of possession, which they're doing early on. And the last one is play aggressive. Take shots, make your plays, and be disciplined, which we've always seen from a Bill Snyder coach team. Arkansas threw it three times in a row on its opening drive. Unheard of a season ago, but more balance offensively in 2015. And movement on the right side of that Arkansas line. Full start. Offense for 84. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. The All-American tight end, Henry. Yeah, if you're Arkansas right now, the leader in this huddle has to step in and say, guys, calm down. We're here for a reason. Let's go out and show what we're about. But early on, this Arkansas team has looked a little out of sync. Alex Collins, the deep back in that wishbone. First carry of the game for Collins. He's to the 25-yard line for a gain of two. Alex Collins, just the third player in SEC history to begin a career with three consecutive 1,000-yard rushing seasons. The other two, Herschel Walker and former Arkansas great Darren McFadden. Oh, that, those are names to join, right? And when you look at this kid on film, he's just a multi-purpose running back with elusive moves. He can do a lot of different things out of the backfield. And, and one of those players that, if you're Arkansas, you want to get as many touches as possible. Play action. Morgan has a first down and more. Finally brought down at the 46-yard line. Weren't many rushers here, but watch the protection here from this offensive line. Got four guys rushing. Nice job there, Brandon Allen, stepping into the pocket and finding one of his favorite targets in Morgan, who's got 10 touchdown catches on the year. Remember, this is a Kansas State defense without two preseason all-conference caliber players in the secondary. One of the worst pass defenses in the country. And today, they're without one of the best players up front in Will Gary, a defensive tackle. 
generate all sorts of room. Fights forward all the way to the 35, a gain of 19, another first down for the Hodge. That's easy money. Hunter Henry has not dropped a pass the entire season. Amazing. And we talk about his soft hands, but he's also a very physical player. He's not willing to go down easy. You saw it there. It took about four or five Wildcat defenders. He's a true, true leader on this team and one of the finest playmakers at the tight end position this Arkansas program has ever seen. The toss to Collins. Gets by one defender. And he's down to the 32, a gain of four. Arkansas has been on an offensive tear the second half of the season. 50 or more points in four of the last six games. They finished five and one. This was a run-heavy offense in Brett Bielma's first two years in Fayetteville. More balanced, the only SEC school with a 3,000-yard passer and a 1,000-yard rusher. And they've been able to overcome some key injuries. Jonathan Williams, their star tailback, got hurt before the season started. They've withstood some injuries to the receiving core as well. Empty look here on second down. Allen's throw is caught by Jared Cornelius. And Arkansas in a groove. The tackle made by Sir Mike Uel Moore. Eight of nine. Another first down. And this is where Brandon Allen has really excelled the second part of the season. You see him there standing tall in the pocket, the awareness. He knew where he wanted to go with the football. He was decisive, got the ball out of his hand, and most importantly, took a shot. Tough kid that has really shown and come and come of age the latter part of the season. Henry motions to the left. There's Collins on the delay. Up the middle, green grass. Touchdown, Arkansas. Rushing touchdown of the season for the junior out of Fort Lauderdale. And he needs one more rushing touchdown to tie the single season school record. The extra points by Cole Hedlund is good. A counter punch by the Razorbacks. Alex Collins touches down in the land of the Delta Blues. Joe Hudner to rally Kansas State against West Virginia in the regular season finale. And this will be our first look at the dangerous Morgan Burns, number 33 in purple and All-American. Four kick return touchdowns this season, five for his career. Short kick, here's Burns looking for room. And he gets to the 35-yard line. Brett Bielma said, if we give him any sort of shot, that's on me. I can't do that. Bowl Mania continues tonight. Oregon and TCU in the Valero Alamo Bowl. No Trevon Boykin, he was arrested after a bar fight. And then the Motel 6 Cactus Bowl, West Virginia against Arizona State. Short drive for the Sun Devils. Cody Cook back at quarterback for Kansas State. Second series for the Wildcats. Charles Jones on that left side. Jones with some room. Bumped out of bounds by Liddell after a 35-yard pickup. When you don't know what to do, go behind the big fella. Cody White here, number 55. Watch him pull out in front and clear the way. He's the guy. It's the reason why I call him an impact player. He makes an impact at that left tackle position. 
very easy there for Jones to find the crease, get inside of it, and pick up some big yardage for the Wildcats. Longest run of the year for K-State. Back to Jones, straight up the middle. And he fights ahead inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Jones was a guy who benefited from some tough love from his head coach. Began the season slowly, lost his starting job for a little while, but he played his best football over the second half of the season. You know, I lost my job my, my junior year at the University of Texas, and I remember how motivated I was my senior year to get back into the starting lineup. And when things like that happen, when adversity hits, you can really gain from it if you've got your head on straight. Play clock at five. Kirk will keep it. Finds a little bit of space. And he's to the 21-yard line, a yard shy of the first down marker. A gain of six. Good patience that time by Cook. Well, the, the thing that just bugs you if you're on defense, defending Kansas State, is they bring in their two fullbacks, Dimmel and Gronkowski, which really present matchup nightmares. And then they put them in the backfield. They line them out, up outside. But these guys are outstanding blockers. And when you've got them in front, it makes it easy for Cody Cook to be able to find a crease, get in that crease, and make something happen. But Cody Cook's now a quarterback, and he'll be judged by what he can do on downs like this. Big third down. start. Offense. Number 65. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Right tackle Matt Klein Sorge. And that's a big penalty. So instead of third and short, now third and six. And it looked like they had quarterback sneak there lined up and ready to go. Now you've got to put the ball in the hands of Cody Cook and ask this young man to do what he's not most comfortable doing, which is throwing the football. You would assume here in a third and long situation, you've got to try to find some of your offensive skill on the edges. That's Burton in motion. Arkansas brings the pressure. Cook pumps sideline. Caught by Burton inside the 20, and he has it up for a Kansas State first down. Simple three-man route there, and they were able to hold off the pressure from Arkansas. And Arkansas is a team that doesn't show you a lot of blitz on first and second down. They really like to turn up the heat on third down, blitzing about 33% of the time. And so that time there, Kansas State doing a good job in max protect of giving Cook the time necessary to get the ball out to the edge. We told you Kansas State struggles in pass defense. So does Arkansas. They're also one of the worst in that department nationally. Cook will run it and does not get very far. Drop at the 15-yard line by Jeremiah Ledbetter, the junior from Orlando, by way of Hutchinson Community College. Check with me, play. Timeout. K-State, they're first. Timeout on the field. Timeout, Bill Snyder will step aside as well. Cavs, Wolves at 8, Thunder Lakers at 10.30. Four head coaches inducted into the Hall of Fame while still coaching. And that's a pretty good list. Just a legend, and you like the way he's done it. He does things the right way, and I told his wife last night, he's been an inspiration not just to Kansas State Wildcat players, but players all over the country with the integrity that he lives with. Another penalty marker. It looks like Klein Sorge again. Full start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Second penalty on the right tackle. To go back to Snyder, he's become famous for his handwritten notes, which he sends 
to opposing players, opposing coaches, media members. Cook changing the play on second down. Play clock winding down. Cook steps up over the middle, incomplete, no flag. Kyle Klein was the intended target. Klein, the younger brother of former K-State quarterback Colin Klein, who was a Heisman Trophy finalist. Now with third and long situations, look for Arkansas to bring in their special speed rusher and their talent, number 48, Dietrich Wise, Jr. Under duress, nowhere to go. Fourth down. And Kansas State will call on the kicking team. That was a great job there by Dietrich Wise Jr. of coming back underneath the play to make sure Cody Cook didn't squeeze out. Matthew McLean on for a 36-yard field goal. His kick up. And good, and he is now a perfect 5-for-5 five five this season. Kansas State has two all-conference kickers, an all-conference punter, and an all-American return man. Special teams has helped this season, has helped this team get to the postseason. Let's take a look at today's Buick Drive recap. This was Arkansas with its lone scoring drive, a big conversion by Drew Morgan. Hunter Henry getting loose for a nice game. And eventually it was Alex Collins punctuating the drive with a touchdown run. Kansas State scored its first touchdown off of an Arkansas turnover. Elijah Lee with an interception. And then Winston Dibble punched it in on a short field. Here's Alex Collins inside the 10. Collins has a little bit of room. He's got the 40 midfield. And finally tripped up near the 30-yard line. Sean Newland may have saved the touchdown with the ankle tackle. That's two touches, two consecutive touches for Collins. And he just goes to show you what type of talent he is. Look, this is no slight on Leonard Fournette nor Derrick Henry, but this is the most underrated back in the SEC by far. You see him here giving his team his best effort here on kickoff return, showing his ability to get in the middle of the field, make a couple uh, moves and wiggle a bit, and take it to the distance. That was a 68-yard return, and Arkansas set up with outstanding starting field position. Cody Walker into the game at running back. Takes a couple of tackles with him to the 19-yard line. The Walker was a guy who missed four games with a thumb injury. And when we asked Brett Bielbo what got this season turned around, one of the first names out of his mouth, Cody Walker. Yeah, well, I mean, look at it. He's 6'2", 256 pounds from Jefferson City, Missouri. 256 pounds, that's like, that's like a linebacker running at you every time. And so when he gets to the second level, Really difficult to tackle. Strong runner, runs well behind his pads. And he's been a force for them when he does get touches. Play action. Allen has a receiver in the flat. It's Morgan who makes the catch. And he's got enough for a first down. And this is where I really think Brandon Allen, is. his game is continuing to grow. You see him here, this is just a waggle. He knows that the pressure is going to be in his face. 
He's got a really quick release, and that time there he showed it, where he's able to come out, recognizes where the open man is, and gets the ball out of his hand quickly for first down. And if you go back and you look at film a year ago, those were the plays, and even early on in this season, that Brandon Allen was not making. But something happened in the Auburn game for this young man, and he's been consistent. That was a four overtime win. On the end around. A little bit of room and a touchdown, Jared Cornelius. Well, that didn't take long. is good by Headley. Well, if you want to make plays, get your best athletes out in space. Cornelius here is coming back around and great blocking up front. But watch the nifty and nimble move here to get into a little bitty small crease to punch this into the end zone. Great job of getting blockers out in front and a decisive cut right there that ultimately allows him to get into pay dirt. New offensive coordinator for Arkansas this season, Dan Enos, who left his post as the head coach at Central Michigan. And when you combine Enos's arrival with improved quarterback play, skill position guys stepping up, Arkansas is a much more balanced offense. You have to respect the pass much more than an ear's pass, and that served both the run game and the pass game. Yeah, and when you've got a quarterback that's also developing right before your eyes, that really helps too. He's been able to give more of the game plan to Brandon Allen, and they've been able to rely on him on those run pass keys to get his team into the right plays. And, you know, Dan Enos was very certain about it. He said one of the hardest things to do was leave Central Mich Michigan because of the relationships he had built with the players, but he said it was just time, and he's really made a difference here for Arkansas. They want nothing to do with Morgan Burns, the terrific kickoff return man, and that's Squibber, fielded by K-State between the 30 and the 35. Well, you gotta get the ESPN app. You can have the Watch ESPN app. Make sure you have the updated ESPN app. You can now watch streaming television live on your smartphone or mobile device, you can listen to ESPN Radio through the app. You get scores, you get the highlights, you get the news. One-stop shopping for whatever you need to know. Justin Sherman gets the call. He takes it to the 35. Driven back. They'll give him forward progress for two yards. There's Cody Cook getting the start at quarterback today. The QB position has been a carousel all season for K-State. On the first offensive series, Jesse Hurts, who broke camp as the starter, went down with a season-ending injury. Alex Denton, a freshman, injured in week two on a non-contact play late in the game. Jonathan Banks, a junior college transfer, missed extended time with Mono. And then Joe Hubner got hurt in the regular season finale against West Virginia. Cook came in and rallied K-State to a win. Cook heaves one up, dangerous pass, and it's going to be ruled incomplete. Don has more on K-State's QB troubles. Well, guys, Cook actually played quarterback in high school, so this is not a random wide receiver that they threw in. He played wide receiver at Cumity College, had no Division I offer, so he actually walked on here at Kansas State. When he first got here, he came in as a quarterback. He looked at the depth, and he said, nah, I'm playing wide receiver. I can maybe play there, but during the bye week was when he started taking snaps. Coach Snyder knew he had a problem at quarterback injury-wise, so he prepared for this. So Cody's been taking 50-50 snaps since then. A fifth stringer at quarterback to begin the season and one of the team's top wide receivers. And we've got a flag.
false start. Offense, number 55. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. There's your first team all conference Seven. left tackle, Seven. Cody Whitehair. Already. A lot of penalties against this Kansas State offense. One of the keys to the game for me was for this team to play aggressive and to play discipline. And when you really observe and you study film of Bill Snyder coach teams, one thing that you can always say about them, they're very physical, they're very aggressive, and they're disciplined. Early on in this first quarter, they've had a lot of penalties. That's something they'll have to clean up if they're looking to win this ball game. Three penalties already. Cook takes a shot downfield. And Burton unable to hold on despite the value of the try. This was a valiant try for sure, but that ball was dropped on the money by a young man that hasn't gotten a lot of reps at the quarterback position. He's been splitting time, but fantastic ball there. And if you Burton, you've got to haul that in for your quarterback. Nick Walsh, an all-conference punter, on for Kansas State. Jared Cornelius deep for Arkansas. Cornelius zigzags his way to the 35, didn't get very far. And that's where Arkansas will begin after a 40-yard punt. Kansas State, well, they started the season 3-0, then lost six straight, won the final three games against Iowa State, Kansas, and West Virginia to become bowl eligible. And they began the season with a Morgan Burns kick return for a TD. Their final score of the regular season, the go-ahead score against West Virginia, a 97-yard kick return by Morgan Burns. There's a reason we've seen Arkansas sky one kick up in the air and squib another. job of setting up the cuts here now that play was designed to go inside but watch him great vision and just a nice job of setting up defenders and the one thing when you see great running backs what they have a tendency to do is to not let you get a good shot on them and with that lateral movement of Collins it makes it extremely difficult for Wildcat defenders to get a big pop on him and that's why he's been able early on in this game to really have some big gains on second and short, and he's able to pick up the first down. You know what also helps an Arkansas running back? <laughs> this Razorback offensive line. This is a wall of woolly mammoths up front. <laughs> no doubt about it. They call them the Buffet Busters. And these guys, 1,600 pounds is the largest offensive line of any NFL or Power 5 team for the second straight year. Now that's muscle. If you really want to grind on the team, that's how you do it. One quarter of the books at the Auto Zone Liberty Bowl here in Memphis. Arkansas with the ball and a four-point lead. Lynch, do what you do. And Brett Bielma said they did not change much. Arkansas did going forward. Ended up winning five of the final six games. And interestingly enough, when we asked Bill Snyder what was his message to his K-State team at three and six, he said, stay the course, don't flinch. First play of the second quarter, it'll be Allen to the air. Has time over the middle, and that's broken up by Nate Jackson, the senior out of San Francisco. Wow. Yeah, he's going to want this one back. He just completely missed it. You see at the top of your screen, he's got a wide receiver wide open. And just couldn't get it to him. Brandon Allen, the quarterback for Arkansas, number two in the FBS in total QBR. Behind only Seth Russell of Baylor. But remember, Russell was injured for the home stretch for the Bears.
Corner blitz picked up, but the throw overthrown intended for Jared Cornelius. Yeah, that was a hot route. They saw the Cobra blitz, as it's called, coming from the short side of the field, boundary side. Burns on the blitz. Allen recognized it, but couldn't hook up with the wide receiver, Cornelius, who had space and perhaps could have made something big happen with that play. Now you're in a third long situation, putting the ball back in the hands of your all-SEC quarterback, Brandon Allen. Allen led the SEC in touchdown passes. He had a 29. Four-man rush. Well, it's third down. Who else? Hunter Henry, the tight end and old reliable. And a first down for Arkansas thanks to the Mackey Award winner. Yeah, he just owns this down. When you look at how reliable he's been, you look at his catches, this is a guy that the percentage on his career is 97.3 passing plays on third downs for him to be able to convert or to score a touchdown. Just, I mean, mind-boggling numbers. And once again there, Allen goes to his safety net. It's a heck of a net. <laughs> a wide net. <laughs> You know about what strikes you about Alex Collins' incredible patience as a runner. Yeah, I, I mean, the timing that he has on knowing when to hit that crease is, is very special. Injured Wildcat, it's Matt Seiward. And K-State thin up front. Will Gary out for this game with an undisclosed illness. And Seiward was the guy starting in his spot. Yeah, they're, they're already thin up there. Travis Blit Brits is the man, the senior, but now you're going to have to perhaps um, rely on DeMonte Hood, the junior number 97, to come in if this is a dangerous injury. Cywert has been, for most of the season, the first defensive tackle off the bench. Good student, 4.0 GPA. Had to leave the game with an injury. Take another look. Looked like as he planted on that right leg, that was the leg that he seemed like was hampering him when he came off to the sideline. Now coming in, number 98, Craig Settles. And Dawn with more on Settles. Yeah, hey, Anish, they, it looks like they are actually looking at that knee, by the way. But yeah, the guy coming in, Junior Craig Settles, defensive tackle, he's only taken a few snaps ever. So uh, certainly stepping into a situation that he doesn't have a whole lot of experience in right now. That's yeah, a tough spot for the junior. And as we mentioned before going to break, Will Geary, a former walk-on who is an all-conference player at defensive tackle, out today for this Kansas State defense, which is already thin on the back end. Allen fakes the toss, has an open receiver in the flat. The tight end, Jeremy Sprinkle, with a big gain and another first down for Arkansas. Gives Sprinkle 20. He and Hunter Henry have been an incredible tandem all season long. Yeah, they just faked the toss sweep here, and they just brought some misdirection. Jeremy Sprinkle starts to the right side, sneaks back in behind that big offensive line, and probably went unnoticed by this Kansas State defense. And now you've got another big play with Arkansas Razorbacks knocking at the door for another touchdown inside the red zone. Arkansas has been outstanding in the red zone this season. They have scored a touchdown on 83% of their trips. There's Collins up the middle, and he's into the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. talked about a few of those offensive linemen for Arkansas, but that's the second time today that you've seen Collins get in on a run right up the middle behind Sebastian Tritola, Mitch Smothers, and Frank Ragnow. Yeah. 
The kick is good. It's 21 to 10. Alex Collins has just tied Bill Burnett's single season school record for rushing touchdowns. That was number 19 on the season. Games were some of the activities that take place throughout the week. And you know, anytime as a student athlete, you've got an opportunity to be able to give back to the community and be around people who would dream of just playing one football play, but for whatever reason, they're not able to. It always is one of those revitalizing experiences for young men um, at, during ball week. There's Morgan Burns, special teams player of the year in the Big 12. Will he get an opportunity? It does not appear so. Line drive kick. Burns does field it. Will there be much room? Able to squeeze free. And there's the ability of Morgan Burns. He just needs a little bit of room. And when you're running down on this kickoff unit for Arkansas, you've got to stay in your lane. This time here, he does a nice job of just hiding behind his blockers. Watch him here set it up. Smooth right there. And then just a small crease. You saw Arkansas there bunched up as he took his time to hit that crease. Now you're out on the edges and you're in the open field if you're Morgan Burns. If you're Arkansas, they continue to try to kick away from this kid. And this is the second time today that they've tried to kick away from him. And he's managed to get his hands on the football. And I think Arkansas is doing the best they can. This is just a special player. Cody Cook will hand it off. And Dalvin Wormack stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Wormack, a redshirt freshman from the Kansas City area. 5'8", 187. So small, shifty guy from KC. Plays at Kansas State. And the comparisons, although probably unfair, made right off the bat with Darren Sproles. It's a tough act to follow, but they like what this kid has a chance to become at K-State. Screen pass. That's caught by Zach Reuter, the freshman from Columbia, Missouri. Fourth catch of the season, and it goes for five yards. Nice second effort there. It looked like he was going to be wrapped up, and now, instead of it being a third and long situation, it's third and manageable for this Wildcats offense. And that's important because, again, Bill Snyder told us his biggest conundrum if you play Cody Cook at quarterback, you lose one of your best playmakers on the outside. Yeah, very true. And that was a decision Snyder wrestled with for the second half of the regular season and in the weeks leading up to the bowl game. Cook standing in, now flushed. Floats one toward the sideline, and it's out of bounds. Fourth down. Arkansas opted to go there with a four-man rush. Dropped a lot of guys back in coverage. And if, if I'm this Kansas State Wildcats offense, I come back and I tell Cook, look, we understand that you're trying to stay in the pocket to throw the football. When you've got people that drop back in coverage like that, take the easy money. Get outside of the pocket and run for the first down. Walsh to punt it away. Bounces inside the five and downed at the one-yard line. What a punt by Nick Walsh. Well, Alex Collins has been the early star for Arkansas. A couple of rushing TDs, 60 yards on just seven carries. And the SEC, all the attention before the season was on Nick Chubb, Leonard Fournette. Derek Henry ends up winning the Heisman. Alex Collins was the third leading rusher in the SEC and put together a fine season and has put together a fine career. You're absolutely right. And then you look at it this year, six 100-yard games in SEC play are second only to Alabama's Henry with seven, and he's tied with Leonard Fournette with six. Just goes to show you um, how talented and how skillful this young man is at running the football. 
As you saw, Walker and McFadden, two SEC legends, the only players to begin their SEC careers with three straight thousand yard seasons. As Cody Walker is able to give Arkansas some breathing room. Yeah, it's just unfair. If, if you're a defender trying to tackle Cody Walker, he's 256 pounds. He's a fullback playing tailback, but he's got the burst to get through the hole. And he's a great compliment for a guy like Alex Collins. And you see here when they're backed up, they go to the big fella to get them out. Walker on second and two. And he's turned back right at the line of scrimmage. Great job there of the Kansas State Wildcats defense. And they've, they've done a good job so far, um, despite the fact that they're down by 11 points. You got to know that this is one of the most talented offenses in all of the country. And to come out here and only be down by 11 points, despite all the injuries, Benicio said it at the defensive um, tackle spot in the secondary. They're still coming out here and trying to punch Arkansas right in the mouth. Arkansas on the season, top 20 nationally in converting third downs. Allen fakes the toss, pressure from Moore. He gets it off, it's a first down and more. Jeremy Sprinkle finally brought down from behind near midfield by Elijah Lee. Let's check in with the studio. We say Happy New Year to Adnan Burke. All right, thank you very much, Anish. Happy New Year to you as well, my friend. Sports Center right now, presented by Great Clips. This is the Tax Slayer Bowl earlier today as Georgia defeating Penn State 24 to 17. That was Malcolm Mitchell there with a touchdown, and Christian Hackenberg declaring for the NFL draft. This was a last chance, which he was not a part of. He was 8 of 14, 139 yards, and one interception. Did not play in the second half, and now he's off the NFL. Anish Ahmad, the A team. Back to you guys. Thank you, Adnan. Look forward to halftime. Look forward to the movie references that always come with an Adnan Verk halftime. <laughs> Cody Walker rumbles into Kansas State territory. It's a gain of a yard. Walker's return so crucial for Arkansas. Alex Collins has done a fine job this season. But remember, it was Collins and Jonathan Williams who were the two primary backs a season ago. Both went over 1,000 yards. Williams suffered a season-ending injury before the first game. And we wondered, could Alex Collins shoulder the load? Well, he's done a fine job. But having a guy like Walker who can take some pressure off means Collins can be fresher and crisper in the fourth quarter. And that's made a difference down the stretch. Allen under pressure looking to dump it off. It'll be incomplete, third down and long. Will Davis doing a nice job of pressuring the quarterback there, number 35. And just as Brandon Allen turned around, Wildcats defenders were right in his face, and he looked like he was looking for a tight end on the screen there. But the pressure and the defense forced him to throw the ball early. Allen, 9 out of 13, 134 yards. No touchdowns. He did throw an interception earlier, which led to a Kansas State score. Collins and Walker both in on third and nine from the 48. K-State brings pressure. It's picked up. And the pass is incomplete. Broken up, intended for Morgan. Donnie Starks, who's been the most consistent DB for K-State, making the play. Now, this was just textbook. He was where he should have been on this route. And you watch him here. If you're going to go inside, you've got to go with one hand to knock that ball down. He had that back hand on the back side of the wide receiver just in case he caught the football. But a nice job, Donnie Starks, getting the start today. The young man from Crosby, Texas, with a fine break up there. Memphis native Toby Baker on the punt it away. Arkansas had the fewest punts in the SEC this season. Dominique Heath wrapped up after a short game on the heels of a 38-yard punt. At least three touchdowns. Terrific performances by Mississippi State's Dak Prescott and Leonard Fournette of LSU. And of course, the SEC with a representative in the championship game a week from Monday. It'll be Alabama and Clemson. 
And after starting off hot, the last six plays for Kansas State, they've only gained two total yards. Cook against the twist, dumps it off, and it's dropped by Charles Jones. Bill Snyder told us this week that we would see both Kansas State quarterbacks, Cook and Joe Hubner. Hubner, remember, got hurt against West Virginia in the regular season finale. K-State very tight-lipped when it comes to disseminating injury information. We were told Hubner was good to go, but he's been on the sideline so far all afternoon, and it's been Cook on every series for K-State. Cook rolling to his right, throws on the run. He's got Reuter, who's tackled in space near the marker. The quarterback Cody Cook is complete. So number 15, Zach Reuter, tackle on the play number 30, Kevin Richardson. The ball across the Now move the chains for Kansas State. 10 yards to go. K-State is a running offense. And Arkansas, even though they haven't been great against the pass, they want to turn Cody Cook into a thrower. Off play action. Cook with time all day. Downfield in traffic. And it's incomplete intended for Klein. One week for Monday, we will crown a champion in college football. Will it be Alabama or will it be the Alabama alum? Dabo Sweeney leading the Clemson Tigers to their first championship in more than three decades. Just an amazing run there by the Clemson Tide. And you know, early on in the year, I, I almost said that it was the end of the Bama run, and all of a sudden... A lot of folks said that. Have, a lot of folks said that. They have completely turned it on, but they'll have their hands full with Deshaun Watson. If all of our decline years can be as fruitful as Alabama's. Against the Blitz, incomplete for Klein, no flag. Coverage that side by Honore Tolliver. And that's a rare second down blitz for this Arkansas Razorback team. And you could tell it looked like Cook was a tad bit surprised by the pressure. Got the ball out of his hands maybe a, a second sooner than he should have, which allowed him, which forced him to, to make a bad throw. Cook is 4 of 11 passing, third and 10. Arkansas rushes four. Incomplete off the fingertips of Burton. High throw. And it'll be fourth down, and the punt team comes on for K-State. Cook had a window there. Just missed fire. Low snap, Walsh gets it off. Fair catch signal by Cornelius, and he makes it at the 36-yard line. It's a 42-yard punt. Take a look back at the 2012 Cotton Bowl. Last meeting between these two guys and... Joe Adams, remember Joe Adams? Yes, I do, and that was some sweet nifty feet that he was showing there, and then Arkansas just continued to pour it on. And there you see it, Bobby Petrino, along with... Bill Snyder, and um, it's just one of those things. These are two physical teams, and as we were preparing to, to call this game, yeah, I was excited because this is old-school football, and, and these are two teams that are coached by coaches that believe in physicality and making your opponents pay for lining up on the other side from them. Collins on first down. Broke the initial tackle and then swarmed at the line of scrimmage. No game. Kendall Adams coming up from that free safety position to make the play. Nine different defensive backs have started for Kansas State. And it's a shame because that position, that area on defense, was thought to be a strength going into the season. But you lose Dante Barrett or Dante Barnett in the first game. Danzel McDaniel out for the season, no longer with the team. Duke Shelley, who had been starting as a freshman, not playing today because of an injury. 
It's been a snowball effect back there. Finds his receiver on that far sideline. It's Morgan again. Fourth catch of the game for Drew Morgan, the junior out of Greenwood. Here's a guy who began the year as a backup wide receiver, but because of injuries, especially one to Keon Hatcher, the team's top returning wideout, Morgan grew into a prominent role and ended up leading the SEC in touchdown catches. Yeah, and that was the matchup they wanted. They wanted Starks there on Cornelius as Kendall Adams, the middle of the field safety. His attention was on Hunter Henry. That's what he does. He opens up things for other players. Toss to Collins, running strong side. And a run out of bounds by Adams after a game of five. Nice wipeout block there on the edge by the left tackle, Denver Kirkland. They say he's got a Miami beam streak to him. <laughs> That's a great reputation to have if you're one of the big guys in the trenches. There's a lot of big guys in the trenches. Yes, it is. And by the way, with that last run, Alex Collins now moves to the second place on Arkansas's all-time rushing list. Play action. Sprinkle. Cuts it back to the field and finally dropped at the 32, a gain of 14. Just a great job here by Brandon Allen. You see him, watch how quickly he comes off of this fake. Gets those shoulders square and avoids the pressure there from number 95, Travis Britz. It's his quick release and his ability to anticipate what's coming on defense that has really helped this kid take off. Offensive coordinator Dan Enos told us when he saw Allen for the first time, he said, hang on, you've got a player at quarterback, and Enos, a former quarterback, worked out some mechanics, worked out some footwork, and it's made a big difference here in Allen's senior season. Cornelius on that fly sweep. He scored a touchdown on that play earlier. Run out of bounds on that far sideline after a gain of 15. Enos is, is calling an outstanding game right now, really mixing it up. He's throwing body blows. He's hitting the jab, the uppercut. He's using everything at his disposal right now and really keeping this Kansas State defense confused. Henry the tight end motions. On the delay, Collins taken down to the backfield. Adams, the safety, he's made some plays in this first half. Bryant was there as well, the senior from Dallas. He's been in the box all game long. Kendall Adams has, number 21. 6'1", 213 pounds from Fort Worth, Texas. Redshirt freshman. You gotta be a man to get in there and wanna mix and mingle with this aggressive front for Arkansas. And, and he's getting some great experience right now, taking on one of the tougher challenges for any safety going up against this Arkansas Razorback team. season for the junior from Kansas City. This is just a great effort, and you see him here. It's the body control. Watch him here at the bottom of your screen. Nice swim move. He stacks the offensive lineman and does a good job of tracking the quarterback. And it's hard, it's difficult to be running full speed, change direction, plank your foot in the ground, and drag down a quarterback. But Jordan Willis has made a living of it all season long as he leads this team with sacks. has had some issues in the kicking game. So this drives the Razorbacks to the 24. Little screen pass, getting free, the ball is out. The pass was to Dominic Reed, the ball came out at the end. Reed is down. Boy, did he suffer from a collision there yeah. for Moore. Number 23, the safety. 
for Kansas State. I didn't see the initial signal, but I think they said he was down. Dominique Reed carted off the field after an apparent hit to the head. And we hope his parents, Dwayne and Alice, know that our prayer is here with them. And from that scene, you can tell both sidelines. Arkansas going for it here on fourth down. Play clock down to five. Brett Bielma trying to get a timeout on that Arkansas sideline, and he does. Hoods up, America. To go for it on fourth and two, Brett Bielma called the timeout. Now he calls on his freshman place kicker, Cole Headland. For a 26-yarder, Headland just one of five on kicks from beyond 27, but seven of eight from inside 27. This is a 26-yarder. Three more points for Arkansas, and we have a studio update with Adnan. All right, Denise, thank you very much. Coming up on the Coke Zero Halftime Report, the Tax Slayer Bowls will break down what happened with regards to Georgia and Penn State. That's the final game for Christian Hackerberg in college. We'll also look back at his career in college. Was he a disappointment for Penn State as he looks ahead of the NFL? Also, if you need another reason to watch, Danny Cannell's wearing a turtleneck that would mock the best of Ron Burgundy. Denise, back to you. Thank you, Adnan. Here it's 24 to 10. Some of the energy out of this stadium understandably sucked out after what we witnessed on Arkansas's last series. If you're just joining us, Dominique Reed, one of the Razorback starting wide receivers, carted off the field after a collision inside the 10-yard line. Both benches, both players on both teams gathered around, concerned about the safety, as did those in the stands and us up here in the booth. 24 to 10 to score Arkansas leading Kansas State. The Wildcats scored first off of an Arkansas interception. It's been pretty much all Razorbacks since then. K-State can use a spark from him. Oregon burns the All-American. He takes it out across the 40-yard line. Our game track is brought to you by U.S. Navy. Kansas State scored on its first two drives. Since then, nothing. Yeah, and, and if you are looking to play both quarterbacks, now is maybe the time to bring Kubner in um, to get a spark. Cody Cook and this offense have seemed to sputter over those last three drives after really coming out to a hot start. And so it looks like Cook will be coming back out, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see Hubner if this offense can't come out here and produce in two-minute drill. Dawn has some good news on Dominique Reed. We'll get to her right after this play. Makes the catch, dropped immediately, and we go down to Dawn. Hey guys, yeah, the good news as they were putting Dominic into the ambulance, he was talking a little bit, even smiled a little bit, he was conscious, he was able to move. They are taking him to Methodist Hospital, that's just a few minutes away from here. Uh, they are calling it a neck injury, but the good news, we did see him smile as he was heading in. That is good news, thank you, Dawn. Burton again goes up high to make the catch. He's got a first down. Collins on the tackle. Kansas State looking to make this a one-score game before halftime. Two, got two timeouts. Two high throws in a row for Cook. He's got to really step into that throw and make sure that he's following through to make sure that he can get that in a range where it's not dangerous for the wide receiver to catch it. 
Hauled in by Klein, who gets out of bounds to stop the clock, a gain of 12, and Kansas State moves the chains. The Wildcats still have both, or I should say two of their three timeouts. And remember, K-State gets the ball to start the third quarter. Cook again with time, pumps, directing traffic, gets a block, and gets out of bounds, more importantly. That'll stop the clock with 59 seconds to go. Patience that time by the converted wide receiver. Yeah, I think that's the remedy when Arkansas rushes four and they drop back enough guys and they really clog up those passing windows. If you're Cook, he's an athletic player. As I said earlier in this ball game, when you have that, take that, because that's something that the defense is giving you. Arkansas brings pressure. Cook, sailing one, two of the end zone. He wants Burton, we've got a flag. Pass interference, defense, number 29, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Here it is right here, we'll see it. And Collins is in good position here. He's underneath the way he should be at the goal line. He looks back there a tad bit late, but that left arm, as you see it, was just maybe a tad bit too touchy. Watch this left arm, you see it there on the back of Burton. I'm sure that's what the side judge called and the reason why the flag was thrown. 52 seconds, two timeouts, time to run the football. First and goal at the nine. Charles Jones up the middle inside the five, tackled at the four yard line, second and goal coming. Clock continues to run, under 40 seconds to go in the half. Now Kansas State uses its second timeout. Cody Cook timeout. looked like Case. Cody looked like he wanted to keep the tempo going there, but I think it's a smart timeout. Come here, discuss the play, the next two plays, rather than coming in and and give yourself an opportunity to know how you're going to attack this Arkansas defense. Sunday NFL Insiders at 10 a.m., followed by Countdown at 11. The final weekend of the NFL's regular season. We'll have all the injury news, the early breaking stories. It all gets started at 10 a.m. with NFL Insiders. Do you have a team right now? Is it the Panthers? Is it the Patriots? The Cardinals? Do you have a team who you like going into the postseason? Well, my hometown team is the Cowboys, and they obviously, it's a mess there in Dallas. But, you know, I, I really like what the Panthers are doing, and it's hard with the way they're playing defense, and Cam Newton right now is really playing like Superman. Uh, I, I know that's the easy pick, but it's also the team that I think is playing the best football. Second and goal. Play action. Cook just throws it away. Third and goal. It's not a bad decision there. You come back, you keep the sticks where they are, you throw the ball away, now you've got an opportunity here on third down. And I wouldn't be so sure here if this is four down territory, um, just based on the fact that if you could punch it in from this distance, it really does help you coming back out after half. I know it's still the second quarter. Could this be four down territory? Yeah, I think so. Reuter in the slot. Incomplete, broken up, intended for Reuter. Andre Tolliver knocked it away for Arkansas. Oh, this was perfect timing and technique. Watch him here, just one-on-one, -on -one, they want a real route. But what made this play was when he saw the wide receiver taking that angle, instead of chasing him and getting him behind him, he went to the mark. He went to the spot at where the wide receiver was going to be. Great timing, great technique. 
as he erased points there for the Razorback defense. Bill Snyder will elect to kick a 21-yard field goal to make this an 11-point game. Here's Matthew McCrane, 5-for-5 five five on the season. He's connected once already, make it twice, and Kansas State tacks on three more. Bill Snyder turned around this Kansas State program. One of the great turnarounds in the history of college football. Mom, you played in the Big 12. When you think of Bill Snyder, of course, you get past all the accolades and the success. What stands out to you? Consistency. <laughs> he's the same every day. And, and I mean, really, honestly, the things that he's doing now, he was doing 10, 15 years ago. And he wakes up in the morning. This is a man that has has plans for his day each and every day which means that translates to his players and when you're a player and you see a guy with that much confidence it's easy to follow him he's a great and wonderful leader but another thing is he's gritty and he's competitive and enough is not said about that because of his demeanor but bill snyder wants to win he teaches his players how to win and i think that's why he's been able to sustain the career that he's had and truly a, a legend on the sideline 76 years old he told us he'll decide after the bowl game not today but he'll take some time to figure out if he wants to coach again in the fall he said before the season he would like his son sean to be his successor alex collins deep for arkansas as k-state will kick it off Short kick taken at the 20. And the Hogs have it at the 25. Bill Snyder has his 16 goals for success, much like John Wooden's pyramid for success. He buys into this. When we spoke to him, he said at three and six, he just went back to this blueprint because it's worked so many times. So many things here that you can learn from and, and these are principles that you know these translate off the football field and, and that's the thing that's so beautiful about what he's been able to create at Kansas State the type of young men that he um, you know really puts his energy into and you can tell the difference there I I need to write those down for myself. The defining trait of his program is family and they call the K-State season openers at home family reunions the question and the fall will be if the Patriarch is there on the sideline coaching. As Alex Collins rips it off to the 45-yard line, Arkansas wants a timeout. They'll get it with 10 seconds to go, a gain of 21. Boy, is he smooth. Alex Collins is just a player right now. You know, he cuts tightly off blocks when in traffic, and he just shows great suddenness in his cuts, and you'll see it here. Watch when he gets in the open field. The hop cut there, that play's designed to go inside and to the right. He bounces it to the left, and once he's in the open field, you see him gather his feet. He sets you up. He can either make that nasty cut that he's made all game long, and he's done all season long, or he's the type of player that can run right by you. Averaging seven and a half yards a pop. Look, I keep handing it to this guy. He's only got 11 touches. You know, the question would be for me going into halftime is, why doesn't he have 15 or 20 already? You mentioned his cutting ability. We see with a lot of guys, they can make that first cut, but they can't make that second cut. This guy can make that second cut and still keep a lot of the burst. That, that's the key there because, you know, look, you and I can cut, but can we keep the acceleration I and can't, the, ability, can't. <laughs> the ability to still run by people? And that's what makes him so special. And then what happens is now when you're trying to tackle him as a defender, guess what you're thinking about? You're thinking about that nasty cut. And now maybe you break down a step sooner than you should, and you give him more space. So he's just a dangerous player with the ball in his hands. Final 10 seconds of the first half. Arkansas still has a timeout. Maybe something quick to the sideline. Allen over the middle. He's got Cornelius tackled inside the 30. And Arkansas will probably use its final timeout. They do with three seconds to go.
Yeah, Brandon Allen just really showed his throwing ability here. And, you know, I talked about earlier in the broadcast the pop and the power that he has to make all the necessary throws. Here's one here. A great route by Cornelius to stem and set the defensive back up outside and then come across his face. And then Allen really put the ball right on target. And now what does Brett Bielema do? You would think field goal. It's about a 46-yarder. Cole Headland, career-long 45. That came in the Ole Miss game. But he is just one out of five from beyond 27 yards this season. Now, he's got the leg. This kid came to Arkansas a year ago as one of the most prolific high school place kickers in the country. This is a 46-yarder. It would be a new career long. And it would essentially negate that last field goal by Kansas State. And now Bill Snyder wants to freeze the kicker, give Headland more time to think about it. Stick around for halftime. You'll hear from Brett Bielema during the break. Adnan Burke and company standing by in the studio as Headland has a little more time to think. Redshirt freshman out of Texas who set the high school record for career field goals and field goals in a season. Big time recruit, he redshirted last year and has had some growing pains in his first season as a starter here for Arkansas. These are big plays here. He just sneaks through right through the middle and a great job there of finding the football. The hardest thing is when you get through the line of scrimmage knowing now that you have an opportunity to block the kick and he finished the play. Special teams to the rescue for Kansas State. That's the fourth kick Headland has had blocked this season. Time now for the Coach Zero halftime report. Here's that man. All right, Anise, thank you very much. It is indeed the Coke Zero halftime report. And Burns still has had a couple of big plays on special teams. Four kick return touchdowns this season. Five for his career. They'll kick this one away from Burns. Short kick. And Kansas State. We'll have good starting field position. There is a penalty marker on the play. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 29. 10-yard penalty, first down. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Well, Anish, play better. That's what uh, head coach Bill Snyder told me they have to do here in the second half. He said he was happy with how Cody Cook controlled the ball game, but he said he needs to have more out of him here in the second half. Did not say whether we would see Joe Hubner. Now, defensively, he said we have got to cover those little bootleg passes. And offensively, we're in the red zone. We are not going to win this ball game with three, not six. He said uh, this is a team, though, that has come from behind. Don't forget, they were down 21 to come back from Iowa State. Cody Cook put together that fourth quarter comeback win over West Virginia last month. So they've, they've been here. And they've been in a lot of close games, even during that six-game losing streak. A lot of those close calls against Big 12 heavyweights. Screen pass, Dominique Heath breaks a couple of tackles, and he gets across the 40-yard line for a first down. Arkansas has controlled the game in the first half. Time of possession is a statistic that some teams don't value. Both of these do. Yeah, and that was why it was one of my keys to the game. 
for Kansas State was to be able to control Thomas possession. They haven't been able to do it, but I like how they started out offensively, giving uh, Cook some options here on a run pass. I thought he made a great decision here to move the chains on the first play of the second half. Charles Jones gets the call on first down. And he's wrapped up just shy of the 45. Jones, the team's leading rusher. Five carries, 40 yards now in the afternoon. to Dalvin Wormack, who charges toward midfield, finally subdued by a swarm of white shirts, but not before he picks up a first down. Terrific second effort there to push the pile by Wormack. Yeah, and that was with Arkansas being a man-free coverage. They were in man-to-man -man on the edges and actually brought the blitz on that particular play, and Kansas State did a good job of beating it uh, and just kept on running with a physical presence, and that ended up getting them a first down. Winston Dimmo, the fullback, split wide, bottom of your screen. Now Dimmo in motion. Off play action, wide open, Dimmo, middle of the field, 10-5, Kansas State with an exclamation point. Dimmel has both Wildcat touchdowns today. Ran for one on K-State's first series of the game. Catches one on Kansas State's first series of the second half. A train on for the PAT. It's good. Yeah, let's take a look at this and see how Kansas State was really able to bust wide open this Arkansas defense. This is the guy that's going to catch the touchdown. He's going to wiggle here, crack lock, and pretend as if he's blocking, but watch him release. Just a great job with the right timing. They fake the run here, and he just releases. Great job there of making a play happen. Wide open in the middle of the field. That is a bust for this Arkansas defense, something that they can't afford to do. Second receiving touchdown for Dimmel. A first-team all-conference fullback. And Cody Cook likes it. His fourth touchdown pass of the season. A little dance. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, Kansas State needed that. They got some momentum late in that first half. A field goal. Then they blocked Arkansas's field goal attempt. And now opening the second half with a long touchdown Cook to Dimmel. I'm sure the message at half for Bill Snyder was, look guys, we've got 30 more minutes of our season to play. Let's get everything we've got. Let's come out here and really press the gas versus Arkansas and give them the fight that they expected because this has been a game early on and you saw Kansas State really come out here on fire after that first touchdown where they came up seven to nothing. Arkansas really started to put some things together and really stole the momentum and now Kansas State coming back after half. What a fantastic start. Ryder Lucas, the ball is out. And Arkansas was able to recover. Well, that would have been a game-changing fumble here and definitely a special teams play that would have been one to remember. He just gets his hat on the football. And that was exactly what happened there as the returner here 
not the not the best job of securing it and you see him carrying in that left hand most people will tell you if you're going to your right you'd like to have it closer to the sideline that time there it was closer to the defender and he gets his hat right on the football there's the man who recovered the kick the fumble byron keaton arkansas will have it inside it's 20. The delay. Collins on first down takes it to the 30, a gain of a dozen and a first down. This offensive line for Arkansas showing why they they're one of the best in the country and just the load. We said it earlier, 1,600 pounds of guys that are physical. And when you've got a running back like Alex Collins, you're opening up space, you're opening up holes for him. He's going to put in work and make those types of plays happen, but it starts with the offensive line winning at the line of scrimmage. In terms of mass, it's the biggest offensive line in football. Number two, the San Diego Chargers off play action. Allen under pressure over the middle. That pass is caught. It's Morgan, and he's going to be close to another first down, second and short coming up. Allen has been outstanding really all season selling the play action. That time there, though, it was just excellent footwork and awareness there. Saw him pull up in the pocket there, keep the ball alive, find a target downfield. Offensive coordinator Dan Enos worked a lot with Allen in fall camp into the spring on improving the footwork. Collins across the 40, plunges ahead to the 43. Another first down for the Hogs. And you got to give a lot of credit to Brandon Allen as well. Dan Eno's telling us he started something with the wide receivers to develop better chemistry with them. They called it a dinner club. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, Allen would get together with the wide receivers to make sure those guys were on the same page. It was a chance for him to get to know those guys as well. And that's been a big reason Arkansas has been so strong with its skill players on the outside. That chemistry. Play action. Allen with time. Zings one. That's hauled in. Morgan. Finally dropped inside the 30 by Adams. A gain of 30. This was an outstanding route here by Drew Morgan. Watch him here. He gets him thinking that he's running that go route, a nice job of transitioning out of his cut, and then the wiggle after the play and the effort. Second team All-SEC wide receiver. He scored 10 touchdowns on the year, one of the leaders on this team. And the junior from Greenwood, Arkansas, is, is really having a fine season. 81 yards receiving today. They're going to give this to Sprinkle, the tight end. And Jeremy Sprinkle takes it to the 23-yard line for a gain of four. It seems every time in this game, Kansas State is able to seize some momentum. Arkansas has been able to respond. That little play action wide open Henry and Hunter Henry picks up a first down. That's his MO. A gain of 14 for the All-American Mackey Award winner. I don't... Catches 49 yards for a guy who has not dropped a pass all season. Just amazing. Walker into the teeth of that Kansas State defense. He'll be marked down at the sixth, second down and goal. 
And here's where I asked the question like I did going into halftime about Collins. 13 rush, 99 yards. He's averaging 7.6 yards a pop, and he's on the sideline. He's been your playmaker, and if you're going to run the football down here, I understand the type of weapon that Cody Walker is, but your junior running back who's rushed for uh, three consecutive seasons with 1,000 yards deserves some touches inside the 10. And a timeout by Arkansas. Razorbacks driving with 8.04 to go here in the third. Freeze. Arkansas looking to win a third consecutive bowl game. They've never done that. The Razorbacks also looking for their first eight-win season since 2011. Good to see Alex Collins back in the ball game. Collins the deep back in the eye. Allen will have to throw it away. That was defended brilliantly by the Wildcats defense. They've shown that look several times today, and it looks like the Wildcats finally expected that play to happen. And that time there, it was a great job of holding up the guy that was trying to come from the backside, the tight end, to slip into the flat. And the coverage in the back of the end zone was outstanding. As we told you earlier, this is a Kansas State secondary. That's been beat up over and over again. Lost a couple of key players in Dante Barnett and Danzel McDaniel. Duke Shelley out today with an injury. Third and goal. Allen under pressure. End zone. Sprinkle with a TD. Touchdown pass of the season for Brandon Allen. Just a great route up there by Jeremy Sprinkle. He showed the defender that he was going out to the flat and just ran what is called a zigzag route. You go one direction, you flip those hips, you change direction, get back inside, and Brandon Allen, it wasn't the perfect pass, but it was good enough for them to score a touchdown. Kick is good. The two tight ends for Arkansas have been difference makers. Henry and Sprinkle have combined for eight catches and 130 yards, and Sprinkle hauling in his sixth Ironman, and that's really transpired for about three, four days now here in the city of Memphis. Fun way to cap off the year, and, and Memphis has been a, a gracious, gracious host to us as, as we've been in town, and, and I'm sure the players feel the same way. And, it's always good for these young players that don't always get a chance to really travel, to go to a different city, experience new things, and so a fun week capped off by a great football game. Another short kick as they try to avoid Morgan Burns. And the catch 22 with that is you're going to give Kansas State decent starting field position. True. More college football tonight as Capital One Bowl Mania continues. Oregon and TCU in the Alamo Bowl. West Virginia, Arizona State in the Cactus Bowl. No Travon Boykin, and that is unfortunate for TCU. He got into a alleged altercation at a bar, was arrested, and consequently suspended for what would have been his final game as a Horned Frog. Cody Cook will keep it, and he's dragged out from behind. There's Dietrich Wise, who really came on in the month of November for Arkansas. Wise with eight sacks on the season. All eight in Arkansas's last four games. Yeah, he's, he's really an elite pass rusher, and he's a young man from Carrollton, Texas. They play good football in that part of the country, and... You can see here, he's, he's got the size, he's got all the physical tools to really dominate at the defensive end position. A four-receiver bunch look to the bottom of your screen. And that's where Cook goes with the football. And a nice game that time for Kansas State. It's Warmack, the running back with the reception. His first catch of the season. 
And I like the idea of that. If Arkansas is going to pack it inside of the box, one way to combat that is to get the ball to the edges, put your, your skill players in space, run those hot routes, get those run pass options where your quarterback has that easy throw and let your skill players um, do work on the outside. Low snap. Plenty of time for Cook. And he'll get out of bounds as he crosses midfield. On the keeper across the 50. Runs out of bounds near the 76 years young Bill Snyder. Will this be his final game as Kansas State's head coach? And there is Snyder's old protege, Brett Bielmo, who spent two seasons as K-State's co-defensive coordinator. Snyder has been non-committal about his future. Warmack out of the backfield again. Across the 40. And taken down at the 30, a gain of 18. Dalvin Warmack providing a bit of a spark. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you get him. He's that type of player that you don't want to try to tackle in space. The hardest play to make in football defensively, tackling in open space. And when you get him the ball where he has time to dissect what the defense is doing, see where the threats are coming, and have an opportunity to make moves, very dangerous player. A decorated high school player out of the Kansas City area, and as a result, has drawn some comparisons during his high school days to former Wildcat Darren Sproles. And Cook has to burn a timeout. K-State back on the move, 527 to go here in the third. We're the hottest young company around. But if we want to keep the soda pop flowing. The color du jour here at the Liberty Bowl. It's the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Kansas State and Arkansas, the Razorbacks, turned it over on their first drive. K-State was able to cash in. It's been pretty much all hogs since then, but Kansas State's offense with a little spark here in the third quarter. They scored on their first drive on the move again. First and 10 from the 32 of Arkansas. Cook thought about the throw, instead he'll run, and he takes it to the 29-yard line, a gain of about four. Cook a little slow to get up. Cody Cook, normally Kansas State's starting wide receiver, but injuries have decimated K-State at the QB position. And you know, Cook is okay after that last play. Just got rolled up on there. Cook will take off. Tackled by Taiwan Johnson, the junior from Texas. One of the downfalls to having a play like this is if you're indecisive, this is another option he can go out to the flat at the wide receiver screen or he can look over the middle or he can run the football is when you don't make quick decisions now you allow the rush the pressure to get to you and it really starts to constrict that pocket and force you where the defense wants you to go instead Arkansas rushing four into traffic for Reuter, and he holds on for a first down. That is a big-time catch right there. Reuter showing his quarterback that he can be a viable option here, just a simple in route. As he comes in, and the hit looked a lot worse than it was, but the concentration, the ability to be able to make sure that you secure the catch, despite knowing that the hit is coming, great job there by Reuter, the freshman wide receiver from Missouri. Three catches for Reuter today, doubling his season total. No gain for Charles Jones. Kansas State only the third team since 1980 
to play in a bowl game despite a six-game losing streak during the regular season. The other two, Illinois did it in 2011. Indiana did it this year as well. And the Hoosiers lost the pinstripe bowl to Duke on that field goal that went over the upright. I'm not sure if it went between the uprights. Ruled no good nonetheless. Kirk again gets a block from Whitehair and takes it to the 15. They run that counter, and it goes to also show you the versatility there. The left tackle, Cody Whitehair from Abilene, Kansas, pull him from that backside and tell Cook, hey, it's easy. Follow 55. He's a mean machine, and he likes putting defenders face in the dirt. Third down. Burton and the throw behind him. And it's going to be fourth down for Kansas State. Yeah, Cook there had what he wanted. Burton was open there in the flat. Just missed fire. But you'll see here he's got the space. Good job of covering there as they run some rub routes. Burton comes out at the right time. Balls off his hands. Very difficult catch to make when you're headed one direction and you've got to try to catch a ball that's thrown in behind you. So McCrane on for his third field goal attempt of the game. He's two for two. And this would make it a one possession game. It's true from 32. And Kansas State gets three more. The difference in this game has been red zone production. Arkansas has gotten inside the 20. They've scored touchdowns. Kansas State has had to settle for field goals. That is, that has been the difference. It's not that Kansas State hasn't been able to move the ball, but give Arkansas's defense credit. That is one of the, the top run-stopping units in all of the, the SEC, which tells you something about the grit and the type of determination that this defense has. But, you know, when you get in the red zone as a defense, you know, I remember what we used to always say is our back's against the wall. And now we've got to come out swinging. We've got to come out fighting. And the best thing that you can do sometimes is bow your back and take away those four points and hold teams to field goals because in a game like this, where it could come down to the wire, you've really done yourself a service in the fourth quarter or when a game's close down the stretch. Crowd of 61,000 plus here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Fourth largest Liberty Bowl crowd. Alex Collins has been deployed on kickoffs. Broke one tackle before finally being spun down at the 20-yard line. Arkansas had a response for K-State's last score. Alex Collins doing a lot of legwork on that drive. He's just so slippery in the middle of the field, and there you see Brandon Allen showing off. Morgan with an excellent route on the outside to create some separation. And then there, they line up both tight ends on the same side. Sprinkle doing a good job of route running and then securing the catch for the touchdown. Collins and he gets to the 35 yard line and he now has 10 100 yard rushing games this season that ties Darren McFadden's single season school record I mean she's answered all the questions when Jonathan Williams went down you said it earlier could this guy be the lead back could he be the muscle for this team and yes it's it's I'll say this it's a lot easier to do behind a, an aggressive offensive line like the Razorbacks have but you've got to talk about this young man's resiliency and what he's been able to do. 
he is a terrific football player that is really producing right now for the Razorbacks. Back to Williams again. And that line gives him some push to the 40-yard line. We go down to Dawn. Hey, guys, uh, watching Cody Cook over here, clearly uncomfortable. He was visiting with team doctors, uh, grabbing his side, his back area. Joe Hubner is warming up over here, uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens here at quarterback. All right, we'll see if Hubner gets in. Hubner had been the starter for most of the season. Bill Snyder told us he wasn't sure who would start this game. We found out it was Cook making his first career start at quarterback for K-State. Allen's pass hauled in by Morgan, tackled immediately. Donnie Starks on the stop, a gain of five. And that appears to be the final play of this third quarter. Each team has scored the last three times they've had the ball. Shaping up for a fun finish in Memphis. Kansas State quarterback Cody Cook added some extra padding in the rib area got a little nicked up on this play on k-state's last series and we did see joe hubner the other k-state quarterback warming up on the sidelines that'll do it to you 290 pounds from taiwan johnson rolling on you and this defense for arkansas has done a great job against him today one of the keys to the game for me was defending the quarterback run 10 rushes 32 yards he's only averaging 3.2 a carry and that's because the Arkansas defense has done a good job defending them. On third and short, Alex Collins seems to have gotten the push, and he'll have a first down for the Hogs. You know, now is the scary part if you're Kansas State because you've got an offensive line for Arkansas that can control a game. And you're thin in the middle in terms of trying to be able to defend the run. You lose one of your best defensive tackles who's out as well. If you're Arkansas, you're thinking it's time to press the gas. You know, they're going to bring in their big boy package. Now they've come in with a fullback, and they're really going to try to run it right down Kansas State's throat. There's Collins. That draw play really has worked well for Arkansas, not just today, but all season. Brett Bielema told us he really likes Collins' patience and his ability to execute that play. Yeah, and, and, and in order to complement that play well, if you're a running back, you've also got to be good in pass protection, right? And, and that is why Collins is the ideal back. I talked about how multifaceted his game was earlier, and he can do so many things for this team. And I, I think the Razorbacks do a good job of highlighting his skills by putting him in the right position and putting him in on the right place. Play action. Allen steps up under pressure, and he's taken down. Jordan Willis with a sack. Travis Prince was there as well. Willis gets his second sack of the game. Yeah, the two best defensive players left on this defensive line. Willis, who leads his team in sacks, and Prince, who's just a man amongst boys down there in the middle, managed to get to the quarterback. And, you know, those are the types of plays that can help you get off of the field. Now you've won on second down. Can you win on a third and long situation? 75, Jordan Willis is going to be bringing some heat off of the edge. Arkansas should be cautious of that. Well, we've seen Arkansas win on fourth and 25 this season. True. <laughs> Amazing play. They beat the play clock. Allen pumps off his back foot. Downfield, open receiver. It's caught. Hunter Henry to the 15-yard line. Well, they went to Hunter Henry on fourth and 25 as well. Yeah, they're just going to move Henry there in motion as he gets up a little gimpy. 
But you're going to watch him. As he moves, he's right here. He moved back in motion. But I want you to see him to stop block and then release. And that's what opened this play up. Watch him there. It looks like he's blocking there. He just runs right by the member of the secondary, the cornerback, Donnie Starks, who's making, who's who got the start tonight in place of Shelley. As Henry there, it looks like he's a tad bit injured, but a fantastic play for the Razorbacks. 43 yards. Now Collins spinning. Still on his feet. Powering through. Full score. Touchdown of the game for Collins. His 20th rushing touchdown of the season. That is a new single season school record. Just a phenomenal effort. Refusing to go down. Watch the defenders here. I mean, they're draped all over him. And that final effort there was the knee down prior to him breaking the plane. I don't know. But I can say this much. That's a play you keep on your highlight reel. We've seen him tonight be shifty. One thing that we hadn't seen him do was be powerful. On that run, that was an exclamation point for Collins to show, hey, I can do a little bit of both. Let's see if they take another look here. Where's the ball when the knee is down? Now, from that angle, it looked like the ball crossed the plane of the goal line. Yeah, it looked like it to me. Razorbacks have some of the most talented offensive skill players. All-American tight end Henry there slipping out in the flat. Then Collins. Look at the physicality. And I can tell you this much. They will be challenged by a very good offensive line for Clemson. All five of those guys were at least mentioned in the all-conference team. And then you look at the weapons that Clemson has. Gallman along with Watson. Nish, we had an opportunity to watch those guys earlier, and they, they are as good as advertised. Arkansas doesn't want to give it to Morgan. It was fielded by Root, who throws it back to Morgan Burns. Arkansas covered it well. K-State will have it at the 35-yard line. The Wildcats wanted to get it to the All-American with four return touchdowns, Morgan Burns. Can you blame them? <laughs> you know, what a creative play here. If you're going to do this little pooch kick, Here's, here's an answer for that, right? Catch the football and throw it back to your All-American kick returner, who, by the way, has been outstanding again tonight. He's been chasing balls down that weren't even supposed to be kicked to him. And so I can understand when you need a spark, go to number 33. We're in Memphis. It was in Nashville, I believe. Oh, Frank boy. Frank Whitecheck, yes, the Music City Miracle. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Were you on that Bills team? I was not. It was the year before I got there. <laughs> That was the last playoff game, I believe, Buffalo has ever played in. You're right. Tevin beat him. Laying the lumber. Yeah, you can, you can sense Arkansas starting to smell blood. And right now, they know this. In order to finish this ball game off, you've got to continue with this physical presence that they've had here starting early or late in the third quarter and running over into the fourth quarter. A new shot from Ott Brooks to Davenport, Auto Zone Liberty Bowl. Arkansas up two scores. Critical drive for Kansas State. Against a four-man rush, Cook heaves it downfield for Burton, who can't hold on. Second time today that I've seen Cook put the ball on the money to Burton. And Burton, who's been a reliable target for these guys all year long from Manhattan, Kansas, drops another big one. That's his second drop that could have gone for big yardage 
for the Wildcats. And the problem for Kansas State with Cook, who's a very good wide receiver, playing quarterback, Great you point. don't really have another option on the outside. Great point. Cook pumps under pressure, and he's sacked by Brooks Ellis. The team's leading tackler in the academic All-American. It's a loss of 11 and fourth down. And that wasn't even a blitz. He just adds, running back, blocks him, Jones blocks him, and he adds to the rush there and does a good job of flighting through. You'll see him here to the left of your screen. Just comes off of the block with great persistence, and when you're chasing down a quarterback, never give up on the play as long as he has the ball. And Cook there knew his time had come to an end. Cornelius retreats to his own 25, and then he's tackled back at the 20. Our game summary is brought to you by Advocare. Alex Collins, three rushing TDs. Brandon Allen, another 300-yard passing game. Morgan Burns has had a couple of big returns, but Brett Bielema will take that because he's kept the All-American out of the end zone. And that's all that this is about. When you've got four on the year, you know, you're right. Giving up that amount of yardage is one thing, and you think to yourself, and, and they've, they've done a good job of trying to kick away from him. He's found ways to get himself involved with the kick return game. Burns had scored a touchdown in each of Kansas State's last four games. Three kick return TDs, and he also recovered a block punt. Walker running behind that moving brick wall, and he takes it to the 25 for a gain of five. Yeah, they're now in their ace formation look is where they bring in two tight ends, Jeremy Sprinkle along with Hunter Henry. And look, that's a sign of saying, you know what, we're about to run the football. You know it's coming. Come stop us. And Brett Bielema has made that offensive line the face of this Arkansas program. They sit in first class. They're on the cover Love of the media guys. <laughs> and most importantly, they're fed first. <laughs> I can understand why they're playing like this. Hogs bleeding the play clock off play action. Allen finds Morgan at the 30. And that's what this team is doing so well, and especially in the latter part of the season and during SEC play where they went five and three. They're mixing that up well. Run, come back with the play action, get it out to your talent on the edges. And that's really been what's made them successful, aside from these big guys up the middle, these buffet busters. Yeah, that's the San Diego Chargers. And as we Jeez. told you, Arkansas has, in terms of total mass, the heaviest offensive line in all of football, Saturdays <laughs> and Sundays. That is amazing. Again, firing his tacklers, using the stiff arm. Cody Walker on the carry. He picks up about six. You look up and down this O-line, Kirkland, the left tackle, 340. I love the story about the left guard, 73, Sebastian Tritola. First team all-conference, he flunked out in Nevada, went to junior college, came to Fayetteville, weighing 370. He is down Jeez. to 344. Oh, oh, my goodness. And Tritola last year, remember, he was uh, the guy who blew up the internet, blew up Twitter when he <laughs> threw a touchdown pass against UAB. Hashtag Fat Man Touchdown. <laughs> yeah, the internet had fun with that. <laughs> and so did Tritola. <laughs> we asked Dan Enos, we said, is there a play like that in play in today's game? I think the official terminology for Tritola's TD pass, it was Tritola left. That was the play call. <laughs> Enos said, it's not in my playbook, but Brett might have something <laughs> dialed up.
And one of the other things that I thought he said was really important, if you've ever played on a football team, the guys that you don't want to mess with are the defensive linemen and the offensive linemen. And because they perform so well, that also allows them the opportunity to really police the locker room. Walker able to pick up a first down. Dawn with more on that Arkansas offensive line. Well, guys, their coach, Sam Pickman, a few weeks ago took the same job on Kirby Smart's new staff at Georgia. So that left graduate assistant Eric Matos to fill his role as the O-line coach for this game. I've been watching him, guys. If you didn't know he was just a graduate assistant, uh, you, you just you would have thought he was the actual O-line coach. Now, Coach Bielema told me before the game he has done a phenomenal job with these guys, that they have really bought in. He's been with them for three years, so this is his final year as a GA. Coach said he's trying to find him a job, and he said he's going to be a phenomenal O-line coach. Walker again charging up the middle. You go back to the story of the graduate assistant that Don mentioned. You only get three years as a GA. Then you either have to have a full-time position on staff or move on to another place. I'll tell you what, this isn't a bad audition tape. No, it's not at all. And, you know, and, and the biggest compliment there for me was that the offensive line signed off on him. And that says that he's got the right demeanor inside of the meeting room to be able to control various personalities. And like I said, some of the dangerous and baddest men on the football team, team the offensive lineman. A studio update with Adnan Verk after this play. Alex Collins. And he B buttons his way close to a first down. We check in with Adnan. Thank you very much, Anish. This is a Sports Center right now. Presented by Great Clips and college football coaching news to pass along is Miami clearly now with Mark Richt in charge, naming Manny Diaz the defensive coordinator. Diaz was the Mississippi State defensive coordinator this season from the Bulldogs to the Hurricanes as we go back to Anish. All right, Adnan, 38-23, Arkansas on top of K-State. Hogs bleeding the clock here in the fourth quarter. This is pure smash mouth. Collins into the secondary and beyond. Another big run by Alex Collins, 35. And he's got 175 rushing in this game. And look, Arkansas right now is putting the SEC on notice. <laughs> because if they can continue the momentum that they have right now, I know there were high expectations coming into this year. And they were disappointed early on by some of the um, obstacles that they faced with the season. But they go five and three in conference play. You come back out here and you have this type of performance against a Kansas State team that's known for being physical. These are the types of things that set you up in the offseason to work hard and really have goals of winning your conference going into next year. College to the 10 yard line. Five and three, Ahmad, in the SEC West. It's great. That was a division in which every team was bowl eligible yep. and went to the postseason. And pretty much every team in the postseason has been taking names and numbers. Yep. Alabama dominated Michigan State. Auburn won big against Memphis. LSU won its bowl game big. Mississippi State blew out NC State. Arkansas exerting its will against Kansas State. The only loss was Texas A&M going down to uh, Louisville. Two tight ends and a fullback. Walker. Waltz is in for six. That's really intimidating. You've had to deal with Alex Collins all day. And then when he gets tired, you bring in Cody Walker, who's 256 pounds. I repeat, 256 pounds. This guy here is just one of those types of players. When he gets going downhill, he's hard to stop, and he showed it there on the touchdown. A 
The point after caps a nine play, 80 yard Imperial March by Arkansas. Well, it starts with the Hawks up front, but when you've got two dynamic backs like this, Cody punching it in and watch his comrade, Collins, happy for his teammate. Day 23, and that last drive was vintage Arkansas. Nine plays, eight runs, one pass. Prior to that, it had been about 50-50 run versus pass, a lot of balance. But to close it out, Brett Bielmo went to his bread and butter. He did. And then the defense, yeah, they have not given up any points here in the fourth quarter. And the offense has scored 14. That's how you finish and close out ball games. Well, Arkansas not wanting to kick it to Morgan Burns, even with a 22-point lead. K-State will have it at the 35. We'll step aside. 438 left in regulation. Arkansas today and that really is a microcosm of what the SEC West and the SEC as a whole has done this postseason yeah I mean I, I think you you could say that this was the most dominant conference but they're coming out and they really begin to show it and yeah, I mean I, it, it's, there's no doubt about it that when you start to look at the makeup of this conference it's easy to see that there are a lot of good teams that um, are really refueling and getting ready to come back out and make a run at it in 2016 as well Joe Hubner in at quarterback for Kansas State. This might be too little too late. Hubner, rocket arm, and that one finds the wrong team. Ryan Pulley with his first career interception. And that's tough. It's tough to ask anybody to come off the bench and start trying to throw the football you know, warming up on the sideline is not the same when you're out here throwing with guys who have these type of cover skills like Pulley, the freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. He's really made some noise that time finishing off. Hubner takes a hit. And for Arkansas, you know, they've been able to score on their last three drives all 78 yards or more. They're marching up and down the field right now on this Wildcats defense. Kansas State got to within 24-20 after scoring on its first drive of the second half. Arkansas responded. K-State got to within 31-23 thanks to a field goal. But two unanswered by the Hogs. Here's Collins. His strength Jeez. has been fun to watch, as is his ability to make those shifty cuts. Sports Center at night follows the Motel 6 Cactus Bowl between West Virginia and Arizona State. We'll have highlights from bowl games, the NBA, the NHL, and college hoops all on Sports Center after the Motel 6 Cactus Bowl. You look at Arkansas's schedule for next season, they get all the big heavyweights at home. Now, again, there might be some teams that they face on the road that we maybe look at now and don't project them to be as good as maybe they will be next season. But you would think it's going to set up for Brett Bielema. This is going to be a preseason top 25 team. This is going to be a team not looked at as maybe a dark horse, but a team expected to do some things in the SEC next year. He's down before that fumble, but you, you, you mentioned it, and you talk about this schedule here. And, you know, TCU, they lose their most talented player on offense. They lose that's a lot of that offense. That's winnable, absolutely. Texas A&M, you know, what's going on there in College Station? People are all trying to figure out. Auburn, where are they at? Look, Arkansas, if, if you're the players on this team, you sit down after this game and you tell yourself, guys, we've got some goals in front of us, and if we really apply ourselves, and it, and it starts the day after the season. Mm -hmm. When you go back and you're back in school and you start to work out, it's go time. And you're starting to you're starting to focus towards 2016 and see if you can get some momentum going. Now, look, I say that and, and I also know that Hunter Henry is a junior with the potential of leaving. Alex Collins after tonight shows you that he's capable of being a dynamic back. So, you know, you, you hope you have these pieces in place, but you don't really know yet until it's that time. Alex Collins is our Capital One player of the game. 185 yards, a season high in this game. He moved into second all-time on Arkansas's career rushing list. He broke the single-season record for touchdowns. He tied Darren McFadden's record 
for most 100-yard games in a season with 10. We have more superlatives, but we'll just give him the Capital One player <laughs> of the game. And again, Arkansas will be expected to do some things. Of course, the quarterback position, Brandon Allen will leave. His younger brother, Austin Allen, will be expected to step in for Brett Bielma, Dan Enos, in this offense. Hats off to Collins and these hogs up front for Arkansas and their ability to really dominate the line of scrimmage. Nearly 600 yards of offense. It's just been a dominant display of toughness and physicality for the Razorbacks. And nine yards of play for the Razorbacks. Meanwhile, for Kansas State, you have to wonder if this is the last time we'll see Bill Snyder on the K-State sideline. I sure hope not. You know, I hope he has one more in him. Like I said, what he means to college football, what he means to young men all over the country by the way that he lives his life, the amount of emphasis and importance he puts on family. He would be greatly missed if this is the last time we see Bill Snyder on a sideline coaching football. More football tonight. The Valero Alamo Bowl follows our game. It's Oregon and TCU followed by the Motel 6 Cactus Bowl between West Virginia and Arizona State. And looking down at the field right now for Arkansas, I had to do a double take. That's number 32, Jonathan Williams. Remember, Williams had not played in a game all season, went down with a foot injury in August. This was a guy who ran for almost 1,200 yards last season at 12 TDs a year ago, the team's leading rusher. Nice moment for him to get on the field, even if it's in a victory formation. But I have a feeling that won't be the last time, because that young man's talented and has a bright future. A Gatorade shower for <laughs> Brett Bielema and a well-deserved one. Arkansas exerted its will in the fourth quarter, and they win 45 to 23. We hope we haven't seen the last of Bill Snyder at K-State. Very much so. Mentor and pupil share some words near midfield. Arkansas has won three consecutive bowl games for the first time in school history. And the Razorbacks have their first eight-win season since 2011. Down to dawn. Coach, the guy's just saying three consecutive bowl wins for Arkansas for the first time in program history. What does this one mean to you? Well, it means a lot. I know our guys battled through the, through the year to get to where we are. Uh, went through some adversity. Guys responded the right way. Got a great group of kids that do things right on and off the field. They make you really proud. Collins, I know made you proud here yeah. tonight. What impressed you the most about his well, performance? It really just all the things he usually does. He's run hard. Protects the football, plays behind his pads, uh, really, really patient with his uh, offensive lineman in front of him. I think he's a, a very talented player. He's had a very difficult decision, and uh, the good news is we've got a lot of good players uh, coming back for next year, regardless of the two or three guys that might go out. One of those guys, Brandon Allen, what does he mention this uh, uh, VA is a special kid. Uh, let him play the way he did down the stretch. Uh, he's going to earn a spot for the, uh, uh, you know, very good chance at the uh, NFL, you know, and I couldn't be more proud of him. Our seniors, they've been through a lot, man. They didn't didn't draw up the recruiting process by what these guys went through with the coaching change and transition, but they weathered the storm. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Whoopee. Post-game trophy ceremony on ESPN3. Arkansas with a big...